make sure you have the proper tools for your measuring. You could be using cups for dry ingredients or solids, liquid measuring cups, a knife, and a spoon. We're going to start by measuring white granulated sugar. Now I'm going to show you how to do white sugar, brown sugar, and flour because although they all use dry measuring spoons or measuring cups, they use different techniques. So with white sugar, you can just scoop it up and kind of scrape the sugar off using the back of a knife to make sure it's level and then you can pour it in to your product. You can also pour it into the spoon, whatever is easiest for you, as long as you're not measuring over your product because then if it spills over, you can't really measure how much went in and it'll be unbalanced. Baking is really a science, it's a chemistry. And if you if something goes off balance, if one is more than the other, then your product will become not exactly how you wanted it to turn out. Brown sugar, because it's a lot more moist, it has the, the molasses in it, it's denser and it needs to be packed down actually, which is what you want to avoid in most other ingredients. So the brown sugar, I'm just pushing it down and with a clean hand, you can pack it into the cup. And it's just nice and firm. And so if you were to do this, it comes out in a nice perfect ball because it's packed down and that's how you know it's exactly the amount that you wanted. Now lastly, we're going to measure flour. Flour is one of the most important dry ingredients that we'll, we will be using with our dry measuring spoons. It's not like flour where you can just pour it in or pack it in like brown sugar because if you have too much flour, it turns it really bready, really easily. If you don't have enough, then it's not going to hold its form so well. So what you have to do is use a spoon and it's called spoon and level or scoop and level. So you spoon the flour into your measuring cup, kind of like what we did with flour, or with sugar, but you have to do it with flour. And then, see how it's kind of overflowing? And then you scrape, you can kind of cut it down a little bit, and scrape it back. And that way it's airy enough that it's not too packed, and then it's also not kind of lumpy on the top. So it's perfectly level, one third cup goes into your ingredients. And that's the dry, the dry measuring cup. Next we'll be using the liquid measuring cup. Now there's two different kinds here. This is probably the most common kind where the measurements are on the side of this glass jar with this little spigot so that you can pour it easily. And then there's this kind that has the measurements slanted up towards you. Now the reason why there are two kinds that are important to know about is because it's easy to mess, mess up your ingredients with the dry or with the liquid. So if a recipe calls for one cup of oil, you can pour it in on this kind and just by peering into it you can see at the level that it says one cup. If we were to do that on this kind, however, By pouring into it, it looks like about three-fourths of a cup. And you never want to do this because, again, it, it's kind of shaking and it doesn't look like one cup, even though I know from this one that it is. So if you are using this kind of dry, of liquid measuring cup, what you need to do is get down to eye level, make sure it's stopped shaking, and you can see, oh, it is at one cup. So then you're all ready to pour it in to your ingredients. So that your cookies and everything else that you bake and cook will turn out just how you want it to and that you could have some delicious food to enjoy. Thanks for watching.